You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atal Allah's famous book of wisdoms, Al-Hikam al ataiyah a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit SecretsHub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. <laughs> وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So we're in the Hikam al Binata, Shaykh Ibn Ta'ilah. So we reach number uh, 41. Uh, we'll talk about what this is. So he says, uh, he says, Al Ajab, Kul Al Ajab. مِمَّنْ يَهْرُبُ مِمَّا لَنْ فِثَاكَ لَهُ أَنْهُ وَيَطْلُبُ مَا لَا بَقَعَ لَهُ مَعْهُ فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلَ الْأَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبَ الَّذِي فِي الصُّدُورِ قُلُوبَ الَّذِي فِي الَّذِي الَّذِي فِي, في الصُّدُورِ So he says he says that um, how strange uh, and uh, how strange and totally strange that one should flee from him from Allah which one has no separation from how strange it is he says from all of strangeness that one should flee from him one has no separation from and seek after and seek after that which has no existence besides him and seek after that which has no existence or no it will not last to seek after the thing that will not last uh, besides him and then Ibn Ta'ilah he quotes the eye of Quran in Surah Al-Hajj that truly is not the eyes that are blind, but blind are the hearts that are within the breasts. It's not the eyes that are blind, it is the, uh, the hearts within the breasts that are blind. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, this hikmah here, uh, the strangeness that he talks about, someone who leaves uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or someone who uh, uh, goes from seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seeking the world and goes from reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reliance on world, on the world or on the dunya is a is someone who lacks uh, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this hikmah is about the uh, uh, it's about the uh, the completeness of one's iman the completeness of one's iman or the knowledge of one's iman that true uh, inner knowledge uh, of marriage, that one has marifa, uh, that one has a completion or perfection of iman. The Prophet والسلام, talked about the perfection of iman because iman, one's faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the certainty of it, the certainty of one's faith can waver. And so, us traveling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being on a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing our utmost to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Him in every single way is because we want ma'rifah of iman. We want that knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that completes and perfects iman, completes and perfects it. And the Prophet wasalam in certain hadith in which he begins uh, none of you true believe and he completes it in many different ways 
the Prophet وسلم, is not to be taken literally, the muhaddithin, the scholars of Islam, not say that it's to be taken literally that none of you believe or does lack iman, that, all, that whoever does not do what the Prophet وسلم, encourages us to do, like the hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحبوا لأخيم لا يحبوا لنفسي None of you believe until you love for your brothers that which you love for yourself. That it doesn't mean that one who does not love for one's brother or one who is selfish, for instance, that they have no iman. You cannot call someone who doesn't love for others, you cannot call him a disbeliever, for instance. You can't, because that's not the meaning of the word. Is not what the Prophet ﷺ is referring to here. What he's referring to is a a a naqas in the iman, a deficiency in one's iman, i.e., a deficiency in the yaqeen, in certainty. A is a deficiency in one's certitude to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and knowledge of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in one's iman. So this had this hikma here. Uh, Ibn Atta'illah, he addresses the, first he says al-ajub, uh, the strangeness. Someone can be, uh, someone can find some, something strange or of wonderment or of marvel because, it, because of something that is either jameel, either beautiful, because one can be uh, awestruck with his ajub, someone can be awestruck and find strange the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. So one can say, Ajib, this is this is completely uh, bewildered by the by the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Or one can be bewildered and awestruck by qabih, by the most by the most indecent and the most uh, uh, ugly of things that it takes one, it's unbelievable, in other words, and strange that someone would engage or someone or something would be of such a, uh, such a uh, uh, ugly, or uh, could be that the, that the astonishment of, of something being done against or transgressed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Shaykh ibn Atta'illah, So he starts off how strange it is. What's strange to him? What's strange to him is that one should seek someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That someone would attach one's hopes or one's desires in something else in the dunya. It's not far-reaching that one uh, would place one's hopes in someone, something else outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For someone who does not see qadr, does not see qadr, and, is, uh, and does not have that strong conviction, meaning that strong uh, yaqeen, that certainty, in that he sees cause and effect and it affects him from the world instead of relating it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one sees cause and effect coming and being affected by the things of this world and not seeing that the doer in all of it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person who is, who is caught up with the, with the effects of this world and places the causes back in this world is someone who uh, who lacks a certain uh, certainty with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and so a the person may go from blaming things and go from weaknesses and lose hope in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He may lose hope with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because he doesn't connect anything back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He does not have he does not connect things to the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so he seeks uh, he seeks uh, uh, he flees from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
uh, from which there is no separation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can escape the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is going to inflict one, one can take means, one can take means, but the reliance is back onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is still reliant on uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one's uh, existence and for one's risk, for one's provision and one's everything. Because no matter how, uh, no matter how uh, one uh, achieves in this world, it all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's from the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if you seek from the creation, from the created being something, seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. We cover this hikmah, He's, he wrote, he covered this hikmah before. If you seek, seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. In that your seeking is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that one does not lose one's, uh, one does not lose one's insight uh, one does not lose one's uh, one's insight, uh, and then he quotes at the end of the of it. He quotes the ayah in Surah Al-Hajj: "Inna la ta'ma ta'ma al-absar, wa lakin ta'ma al-kulub al-kulub al-lati fi sudur That is certainly it is not the uh, it is not the eyes, or truly it is not the eyes that are blind. But blind are the hearts within the breasts. Blind are the hearts that are within the bless, the, within the, in the breasts. Uh, that the eyes are used for sensory. The eyes are used for the uh, the the, wahir, the things that are external. The eyes only see what the forms of things. The eyes does not the our eyes do not see the reality of things. They don't. Our eyes see colors or they see shape and they see the sensory things, the things that have forms and shapes. Our eyes don't see uh, hikmah. They don't. Our eyes don't see wisdom. No, it doesn't. Our eyes don't see uh, cause and effect and relate it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our eyes don't see it. What sees it? It's the heart. It is the hearts of the human that sees it, of the creation that sees the cause and the effect and sees things that, are, that all go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the heart that sees it. And so if the heart is blind, if the heart is blind, of the, some say it's the inner eye, the heart is the inner eye. If the heart is blind, then what happens is that the is that the individual may uh, be lost, his intention may be lost. He goes from sadness to happiness because of the world that he lives in. He goes from hope to loss very quickly. He goes from, uh, because he's placing his hope on this world. And so if you place your hope on this world, there's a hikmah that they've been taught about. Wrote. If you place your hope on this world, then you may be saddened by it. You may be saddened by it. You may be happy by it also. You may be happy by it, but you may be saddened by it. And so the servant is pleased as long as the world and the things of this world goes, go his way or her way. And they become displeased if it doesn't go their way. While the servant who is traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks what? The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He seeks to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once he reaches that state of being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what comes his or her way, he's, all, he's still pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what comes to the servant's way, good, bad, difficulties, ease, whatever comes to the servant, he's pleased still with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it's the eyes that may grow blind. But his heart does not. His heart does not. And so true blindness is not the blindness of eyes. True blindness 
is the blindness of the heart, of insight. It's the blindness of the heart. And so how does the heart become blind? How does, how does the heart become blind? Because we need to assess what should we do, how should we, how, how do we know that the hearts are blind? We know the hearts are blind. Uh, some of the ulama have said the hearts are blind uh, because of three things. Imam Shadali, he, he says the hearts are blind because of three things. Three things causes the heart to go blind. Uh, and one of them, the first one he says, is the limbs disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does the heart grow? Uh, how does the heart become blind? Insight. Uh, how does it grow? Uh, how, does it, how does it develop into blindness? The heart is the limbs disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The limbs disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hands reaching for the unlawful. The feet walking towards the unlawful. The tongue speaking the unlawful. The ears listening to the unlawful. The tongue uh, tasting the unlawful or speaking the unlawful. The, the limbs not doing what is obligatory for it to do. And that is submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outwardly or inwardly. The limbs. And so one, the, one's insight is lost by what the dis disobedience of the limbs, the disobedience of the limbs. You train, if one trains the outward, it strengthens the inward. If one trains the outward, it strengthens the inward. It strengthens the inward. One's very limbs prostrating in long sujood or in frequent sujood will train the inward heart to also have submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm, to have submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no doubt that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, that he was training the heart and that he was strengthening the heart by what the hours that he stood in prayer at night and the sujoods that he, that he prostrated at night, every night, that the, his heart was becoming conscious so that even when he slept, his heart was still conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he attested to himself. He attested to himself. And so the, the, one of the ways that the hearts become blind, the inner eye of the heart becomes blind, is allowing the limbs to disobey, uh, to disobey the, uh, or to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing he says is desire for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one having desire, the inner eye becomes blind because one desires the, the world, one desires the, the creation, the khalq, and one does not desire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the khaliq. And the heart and the inner eye becomes blind because of it, that one desires the, the khalq, one desires to be admired by the khalq, one desires to be accepted by the khalq, one desires to, uh, to find success amongst the khalq, one desires to, uh, to, to befriend the khalq, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of desiring to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or instead of desiring to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of desiring to, uh, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one uh, eyes becomes blind because one is desirous of this world. Because one is desirous of, of this world. And it could be something subtle. The desiring of this world could be something subtle. Mm. It could be something subtle. Even in our ibadah, it could be we could desire the khalq, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Literally, even in the way, in, in, uh, in our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one has to be very careful. Because what can enter into obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is riya. Is that we're showing it to, to other people. That we're doing it with to other people. That we change our ibadah because other people are around because other people are around. 
that we pray longer or we stay in Ruku longer or we stay in Sujood longer because other people are, are watching us or we perceive that other people are around. And so this desire can take the form of not just doing the haram, this desire for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not just be, it's not just, it's not just doing the haram. It's not just doing the haram. We can desire the khalq, the creation, even in doing the right. Even in doing the right. Because we do the right, what is ma'roof, we do the right because of what other people will think of us. We're doing it for other than the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one has to check one's niya. One has to check one's niya at all times. That one is not doing it for the fulfillment or gratification from the khalq or to be uh, praised by the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one is actually doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to internalize the neo. That is to make the neo strong. That is to make the neo strong and to make a lot of dua before one does anything. And then he says, this is, and this is part of the third thing that he says, uh, that uh, the inner eye becomes dull because of the ungenuineness or ingenu- ingenuineness of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one is not genuine in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning what? That one uh, mixes the intention of what one does in terms of obedience. One mixes the intention of one does with, uh, with in terms of obedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if one mixes one's intention, then what happens is, uh, what happens is the riya happens, or showing off happens. Uh, these things happen, or boasting happens, or arrogance happens. That one becomes, that one thinks that one is better than others because of one's acts. And so one should be blind by one's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by one's own obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if one is if one does not see one's acts or one's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then one can continue in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one will never be satisfied that one is doing enough one will never be satisfied that one is doing enough or one will never be satisfied that one is uh, that one is uh, is uh, sufficiently worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one, in one's worship one should always see that one is is naqis, that one is in deficiency one should always see that one is in deficiency and one's ibadah in one's viewpoint should always be in deficiency, why? because one is looking at oneself if one looks at oneself one will always see the deficiency of one's actions, of one's obedience, of one's worship, always. Because you know what goes in your head, in your mind when you pray Salah. You know. You know what comes to your head when you're in Ruku, when you're in Sujood. You know. You know what your eyes wander upon or what your eyes hold gaze to when you're fasting. You know. You know what goes through your mind when the box is passed around or you leave the masjid, you know. No one else knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know. Since you know that, then you should never feel that. One should never feel sufficient in one's ibadah. One should never feel that one's ibadah is kamil, tamam, that one is, is, that one is complete or one has perfected one's worship. No. One should always feel the deficiency of it. And that's tr- that, that feeling deficiency makes us strive even harder. How does one become satisfied with on ibadah when one compares it to other people's? When does one become satisfied with one's knowledge? When does one become satisfied with one's knowledge and think that one knows more? Or thinks that one is better than other people, that is better or does not see the deficiency in one's actions or one's ibadah when you compare it to other people. 
when you compare it to other people. That's when one sees it. And this was not the way the Prophet ﷺ. It was not the way the Prophet ﷺ. By the very attestation of the Prophet ﷺ, when he says, Wallahi inni astaghfirullahu wa atubi ilayhi yawma akthar min sab'een, or miyata marra, there's two narration that the Prophet ﷺ, he says, by Allah, and took an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that verily I seek forgiveness of my Lord and I return to him in tawbah and repentance in a day, in a single day more than 70 times, in other narrations a hundred times. Why would the Prophet wasalam, seek it? His repentance and forgiveness. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why would the Prophet wasalam, seek forgiveness and repentance? Because he was never satisfied with his own actions. He was never satisfied because he never compared it to others. There is no comparison to the creation and what they were doing. He was not, he did not compare it to others. And so if we want to be like that, if we want to follow in that sunnah of seeking repentance and seeking forgiveness, I mean we seek forgiveness and repentance because of sins that we do not because of deficiency of our ibadah. This is not the way of people today, unfortunately. It's not the way of people today. People are joyful because they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they should be. They should have a joy. And joy over what? That Allah has allowed them to do it. There's a certain pleasure that you should have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to arouse your your kuwa, your strength and your conviction to come to the masjid that's the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is concerned over you and so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his concern over you you should be happy that he showed concern over you sad at the same time that you're deficient in your worship because he's aroused it in you and allowed you to to understand the importance of worshipping and praying to him seeking him, worshipping him. One should be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has aroused it in you because he's concerned for you. But one should feel sad that you're not up to the job, that you cannot do the job sufficiently uh, in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves to be worshipped. Mm. That Allah subhanahu wa that one, ta'ala, that one is not sufficient. It's not sufficient. That lack of... of knowing that your worship is, is not sufficient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets the servant to always draw even more himma to increase his aspiration or his hopes on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets him to do another act of worship after that and gets him to do another act of worship after that and gets him to do another act of worship after that it is not the you know it's not the um it is not, you know, that uh, one should be happy that one comes for Fajr in the morning and then one comes for Dhuhr and one comes for Asr and one comes for Maghrib. Those things are important in the completion of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. What one should assess is what one does between the time of Fajr when one leaves and the time of Dhuhr. Then you know your state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what happens between the time that you pray Maghrib and to Isha time when you pray Salat al-Isha. That's what you assess. What happens in between the prayer times, that's important. That is the real uh, test. Uh, the resolve of the believers is not the prayer, not the ones who are praying. The test for the true believers prior to Allah is not the prayer. The prayer is easy because you get into a habit of it. Even if you don't set your alarm, you still wake up in the morning for Fajr. The believer who is praying five times a day, don't think that you're special. You're not. Look at what happens between the prayers to determine if you're special. That's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's for the traveler. That's for the traveler. The ones who are praying five times a day that find it difficult, they are special because their struggle is in the establishment of the prayer. For those who are surpassed that, that struggle, 
most of us shall not have surpassed that struggle of praying five times a day. Our struggle is what happens in between it to determine whether the prayer actually is effective and affecting us. What happens after the prayers is more is important for us to determine to see whether our inner eye is dull, whether the hearts that are within the breast and its emphasis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's her emphasis. Emphasis of what in the ayah? Emphasis that 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 is what one should concern oneself with. That the heart and the state of the heart is one should concern oneself with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, forgive us, have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us increase in this world. Give us success in the next world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us closer to Him, increase us in knowledge and practice of Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ma'rifah that is, that is complete. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ma'rifah that is complete and that is perfect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to seek forgiveness of Him <coughs> in our acts of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us clear insight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our children. Protect our parents, give them good health and long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, heal them and cure them, those who have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant them his mercy, his makfira, and his shade, on that day when there's no shade except his. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, put our children on the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, elevate them in the next world, in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant us a resolve to worship him in the way that he deserves to be worshipped. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us to see our deficiencies as deficiencies. Help us to focus on our works and not to focus on others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in following the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, both inwardly and outwardly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words our best words. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.